two years, it would be an understatement to say that I have learned quite a bit about YouTube. You can bet that if I went back or if I was starting a new channel today, there would be a ton of things that I would do different. So in today's video, if I was starting a channel today, nine mistakes that I would make sure I didn't make again, nine mistakes that I'd see new YouTubers making all the time. to another video. It is a rainy day here in Thailand. We are socked in. Starting to get to that time of year for sure. I'm not really too mad about it. Growing up in the desert, I really like the rain, but I really don't miss having wet socks all the time. In the constant battle of trying to have your videos be relevant on YouTube, there's quite a bit going on behind the scenes that will honestly take you some time to learn if you're just starting your YouTube journey. But luckily today, I'm gonna take you through quite a few that I made as well as a few that I see other people make all the time. And now while these are all very important, number eight and number nine, if you're just getting started on YouTube, I can almost promise that you are making these two mistakes. So make sure you stick it out so you can nip these in the butt and start growing your channel as soon as possible. Number one is a very common one. I definitely dealt with it. And that is it can be really hard to kind of have a direction when you first start on YouTube. But this mistake that I see a lot of people make, myself included, is not narrowing down what exactly you're trying to do with your videos. In the creator world, we call it niching down. Essentially understanding what type of videos you want to make. Now when you're first getting started, YouTube is trying to figure out who your audience is. When you're on YouTube, I'm sure you notice that the types of videos you usually watch, those type of videos will be showing up on your homepage, even if they are from creators that you might not have watched before. And when you're first starting out, essentially YouTube has no idea what type of videos you make. So not narrowing down exactly who you're trying to cater to and not giving YouTube the opportunity to start building your audience and understand who it should show your videos to is a major mistake. So I definitely recommend kind of having a plan before you get going. Number two is one that I definitely took some time to kind of develop and understand that's how I was gonna be more successful. And that's not utilizing what makes you, you essentially. Now really, no matter what type of videos you're trying to make, there's a better chance than not that there is already somebody on YouTube kind of making that style of content or maybe talking about that subject. But of course, nobody is you. There are gonna be things about your personality that are different, your sense of humor, whatever it may be. And I think it's really important to try to lean into that. I think relatability is something that's very important if you are a content creator and spending too much time trying to maybe emulate other people's attitudes or their sense of humor or anything. If it's not natural to you, it is really easy for people to spot things that are not authentic. And this can definitely slow you down in the long run. So just be yourself and lean into that. Number three, I think is one that's really hard when you're starting out, especially if you don't really have any experience making videos. Now on YouTube, of course, we all get inspiration from other creators. We might see an idea or a style of video. And while it's good, especially when you're first starting out to try to emulate things, because one, it teaches you how to shoot and edit those type of tricks or maybe different styles of filming in general. But the mistake here is essentially just taking carbon copies and just completely remaking videos. Now, if it's a subject that is trending on YouTube, for instance, if it's some type of story or something that's going on and you want to make your own video about it, that's great. But I think essentially copying and pasting somebody else's videos can be a bad idea because it kind of goes back into that being authentic point that we made a minute ago, that you're not really being yourself. If you do see an idea that you want to make some content about, just do your best to kind of make it your own. In the YouTube realm, we call it repackaging. So if you do that, you're kind of double dipping. You might be learning some editing techniques or filming, anything like that, as well as kind of learning how to express your personality on camera. Now, number four is a huge one. This is a tool that is there for you to utilize. And if you're not taking full advantage of it, you could just essentially be spinning your wheels. And that is really not learning how to understand your analytics. Now, if you don't know, when you start uploading videos to YouTube, get what's called YouTube Studio, and you can go in there after you upload a video and there's all kinds of information, how many people your video is being shown to, what the click-through rate is essentially. And there is tons of tons of information. If you're not doing your best 
to understand that, it can set you back. YouTube is really simple. The whole idea is to get as many people to click on your video as possible. And once they do click, retention. How long are those people watching the video before they click off and go to another one? Now, if you can go in your analytics and understand how this process is happening, it'll really give you an advantage and will let you know things that work or don't work in the future to help you on future uploads. Now, on the flip side of that, there's two sides to the analytics coin. Number five is a mistake that I honestly frequently still make and I kind of have to reel myself back in from it. And that is spending too much time in your analytics. Unless you're actively trying to go in and learn something and you're really trying to implement new things on your videos, just hanging out in your analytics all the time can definitely take some wind out of your sails. The growth is probably never gonna be fast enough for you to be happy. So I would say, especially when you're first starting out, unless you're going in there to actively try to learn if something worked or didn't, I think it's a good idea to relatively just stay out of your analytics. Now, number six, I think is really important if you're not trying to psych yourself out or get burned out really fast. And that is just comparing yourself to other channels. Now, relatively, no matter what you do, no matter how successful you are, there's always going to be a channel that is doing better. Now, while I think it's good to set benchmarks and it's good to have goals, it's not going to do anything positive for you for you to upload a video and then go over to whatever channel and be like, well, they did this and they got five times as many views. Now, like we said with the analytics, if you're doing that to learn something, if you're analyzing what they do in their videos or why you are engaged with it, that's different. You get to five, 10,000 subscribers and you're looking at a channel that has 500, it's always gonna be a little bit disappointing. So really just try to keep yourself honest with where you are and have realistic goals. Number seven is one that's gonna happen no matter what type of platform you upload content to. We all deal with it, even those amazing huge creators you see. And the mistake here is taking any negativity personally. Now, constructive criticism is great. Can you fix the volume or your audio? That's great because that actively lets you know what at least a part of your audience is looking for. But no matter how good your videos are, how popular, how cool your edits are, there are gonna be people in the comments sometimes that are just negative. Now getting into number eight and nine, I think if you don't take anything else from this video and you just take these two points, don't do them or restructure them so they work for you, you will have some sort of success. Number eight, this is a huge one that honestly took me a long time to learn, and that is blaming poor performance on the algorithm. Like we said earlier, sometimes you will have a video where you think it's a great idea, the edit is great, the thumbnail and the title are great, and it just does not do well. This is gonna happen regardless, and yes, it is disappointing, but I think failing to analyze the failure and just blaming it on the algorithm is a huge mistake. The YouTube algorithm isn't some sentient all-know being that just decides to pick people out of a hat who it wants to promote and who it doesn't. Like we said earlier, YouTube is simple. It's all about people clicking and watching videos as long as possible. I think a really good tip that actually came from Mr. Beast, he said, instead of saying the algorithm, replace that with the audience. You sit there and you're like, wow, the algorithm really throttled my video. The algorithm didn't like my video. If you replace that with the audience, that's gonna give you a much more honest angle to analyze why it didn't work. And in all reality, the only time your algorithm is gonna push anything down or maybe not show it to as many people is if you're covering a topic or you have images of things in your video that YouTube doesn't like. At that point, of course, yes, YouTube doesn't condone that. So it'll either strike your video or it'll just bury it so not a lot of people can see it. Don't blame the algorithm. Just do your best to understand why something isn't working. Number nine, it took me probably six months to really understand this. I had an idea of it, but I realized after that amount of time that I wasn't really implementing it. It's failing to realize or failing to commit to the fact that you need to make videos for your audience, not just for yourself, if you want views. No matter what niche you're in, no matter what type of videos you want to make, if you're doing it for long enough, you're gonna come across subjects that you might not necessarily wanna make videos about. But you have to understand that if your audience wants that, you have to provide it. Essentially on YouTube, you are providing a service, whether it's entertainment, information, whatever it is. So failing to provide that service for the audience that's looking for it is 100% gonna slow down your growth. Now, of course, a lot of the times there will be other people that are interested in the same things that you are, so you can make videos that are cool to you. And most likely there will be other people that enjoy it. But if you're really trying to achieve those goals faster, it's important to understand that you need to make videos that people want to watch even if that means sometimes making videos that you don't necessarily want to make. If you do your best to implement all these things and you stick with it, I can almost guarantee that you will have some sort of success. And even though you might know these things now, it's gonna take you a while to really implement them. So I think the most important thing is just sticking with it if it's something that you really want to do. Thank you guys for tuning in to another video. I will catch you tomorrow on the next one.